All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Probes Plus, which is being made by forum user Akron, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game, as you could probably guess from the name, it adds in a whole lot of probe parts for you to mess around with, which on its own, that's already pretty fun. But what really sort of grabbed me about this mod is that these parts weren't just made up off the top of the mod maker's head, no, they're actually inspired by real world missions ranging from the mid 60s till recently. And I rather quite like that. Now they're not historical one-to-one -one recreations of parts, rather they're more of an homage to missions like the Kepler or Hubble or Voyager missions. So you'll get very similar parts to those, which I actually think I may like that way of going about it rather than the historical one-to-one -one recreation, but that's a conversation for another time. So let's jump right on into the VAB and have a look at the <laughs> quite numerous parts that we do have here. Now let's grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison, zoom in a bit as they are probe parts, and then thankfully the mod maker has taken advantage of the search bar as all of the parts have this Quattle Aerospace Manufacturer, and here you can see we've got quite a number of parts to go through, which we'll try to go through them all quite quickly here. Most of them are just repetitive, like multiple different uh, solar panels, etc. So it shouldn't take too long, though I should point out one thing before we get going. Now, the vast majority of these parts you can use without any other mods installed. Some of them, though, require D-Magic Orbital Science because, of course, they're things like the Gamma Ray Spectrometer, which is not a vanilla science experiment. No, it is a D-Magic Science module. And so if you do want to use all of the science parts that come with this mod, you're going to need D-Magic Orbital Science. But not all of them, things like the thermometer, the accelerometer, etc. that are on here are just fine in the vanilla base Kerbal Space Program. And in fact, the vast majority of the parts we have here are just fine without that additional mod. But if you do want all the science parts, D-Magic Orbital Science. Now we'll start up at the top and work our way down, and the first we have is the Quetzal Command Pod here, or, well, Command Probe, I guess, as it is an unmanned command pod with a reaction wheel, SAS, and a near 20 electric charge, and as you can see here, not exactly the biggest thing in the world. It's quite similar to some of the other probe cores we do have, except it has the more, you know, gold foil texture to it. And if we can zoom in a little bit there, you can see we've got some interesting detailing along the side, which is always quite nice and handy, including some good lettering right there. So quite a nice, beautiful little probe core. Now, the next one we have, and I think my favorite of the probe cores on this, is the Torika, if I'm pronouncing any of these correctly. A slightly larger probe core, as you can see here, almost comparable in size to the Mark I command pod, and a bit more detailing and modeling on it, which I always enjoy thoroughly. And again, it is an unmanned command pod with a reaction wheel. Oh god, lock in place, there we go. Reaction wheel, SAS, electric charge, and this one has some built-in monopropellant, which is always useful. Now, if we just chuck both of these off, the next we have in line is a battery, the CA100i, which holds 100 charge, as you might guess from the name. And then we have the 25i, which holds 25 electric charge. There we are, lovely little small battery. And then finally, the 300i, which, as you might guess, holds 300 electric charge and is a bit bigger. All quite nicely made, beautiful little models. I do like that on the back you do have that that gold foiling on it, it is quite intriguing and a good uh, sort of, ooh, what's, what's the word I'm trying to think of here? Hmm, a common design element throughout all the parts. That wasn't exactly a word, but a phrase which, you know, it works, there we go. Now, once we check off these batteries, the next part we, oh, no, I don't mean to throw away the whole command pod there. Oh no, I can't just get this one battery, hold on guys. Uh oh, uh, hmm. 
All right, well, the attachment point for this one seems to be a bit off. I can't seem to grab just it anymore. Well, let's not fiddle around with that and just move over to another side of the command pod. And the next thing we have is the ground plane antenna, which is a data transmitter and requires 12 electric charge per packet. And it's just a, a simple little thing. As you can see here, it does deploy if we, there we go, turn that off. Excellent, it's quite a nice little thing. I like that it kind of spears out and has the four prongs going off in each direction. A pretty cool little antenna. Very nice indeed. Now the next one we have is the cone antenna. There we are. Now this one does not have a retract animation to it and it uses a similar electric charge per packet and similar data transmission rate. It is just a very a very interesting looking part. I do quite like the cone antenna here. Uh, the next one we have is the Quetzal Omni antenna, which there we are, we can do that. Again, no animation to it, and a similar rate of data transmission and electric charge to the other two. The next one we have is a small folding dish, which of course, you know, extends, which is nice. It folds outward. Not exactly the most impressive looking dish ever, but again, quite useful and always good to have something that does kind of fit flush with the rest of your rocket. Again, though, similar data transmission rate, but a little bit less electric charge per packet. So about 10 electric charge per packet there. Now the next antenna we have is the CA1 or CAA100 small antenna dish. And this one just sort of fits flat onto an attachment point or of course, radially on the side and is just quite a nice little dish. I do like this thing quite a lot. Uh, again, similar data transmission rate to the others thus far. The next we have is the CAA200 medium dish, which uh, uses a lot more electricity per packet at 22, but does have a slightly faster data transmission rate. And well, it's, uh, it's a big antenna. A very big antenna. Well, really a dish rather than just an antenna, but works well. And the last is the large dish antenna, which uses less electric charge than the medium dish, which I find strange, but has a much faster data transmission rate and only using 18 electric charge per packet. And this thing, well, it's pretty darn big, as you can see here, and uh, quite, quite nice. I do enjoy it. Now, the next thing we have is the Advanced Attitude Control System, so it adds in some SAS and also a small amount of electric charge at 15, and just a nice part to throw on the side of your probe and have some, you know, Lovely attitude control, always good to have that. Now the next one we have is another stability assist, which is the Star Trek. This one doesn't have electric charge like the other. It is purely just attitude control SAS, but a very nice looking part nonetheless. Again, that gold foil design, always handy to have. The next is the first of our D Magic Orbital Science Experiments, the Dust Collector. Quite a small little thing, and apparently a a what it's supposed to be is a gel coated collector that traps dust as you're going through an atmosphere and bam you get delicious science always good and quite a nice little part so there we are for that one we have another dust experiment the x dust experiment this one though is not d magic this one can be used just normally and yes just a nice lovely little experiment very good modeling work on it i'm quite uh, quite a fan of the look of this one very cool indeed and then we have a solar panel, the first of multiples here, the one by two deployable solar panel, which if we go to the side here and extend, there we go, a quite robust, very thick looking solar panel there, very good overall design, I do enjoy it, and will produce 60 electric charge per minute. Now let's pop that off and go to the next, again, a one by two. I think this is my favorite of the solar panels, if we extend, purely because of this thing over here. I don't know why. It's exactly the same as the other one, except it has this little extra bit on the end that just, it just does it for me. I like it. Who knows? But yes, again, 60 electric charge per minute and overall just a very nice solar panel. The next we have is a three by one. So this is gonna be a very wide little fella. This one does have tracking speed. I should have mentioned these two do not move. They will stay solid wherever they're placed and you need to turn the ship into the sun for them to charge. This one does track. So we do have a bit of tracking speed there and it is, as I said, very wide but a very cool looking solar panel. I do quite enjoy it, it is quite nice. And 2.1 electric charge per second, and with the tracking. Now the next one we have again is a tracking 
solar panel, a one by two, similar to the others. There we are, a bit uh, larger, extending out a bit further, but overall quite a nice little thing. And we'll do 1.5 electric charge per second. Away is handy. Now if we can actually grab it, there we are. The next part is an electrostatic science rig. This one is one of the, oh boy, flubbing my words here already. This is another one that needs the D magic orbital science and is just a cool little electrostatic experiment, which as you can see, does deploy, and that makes me happy. Nope, there it goes, a little bit further down, and that is it, that is the deploy animation. Quite nice, I do, I do quite like it. Actually, did I look at this one? Did it have an animation? Oh, it does, it opens it, its lid. I didn't notice this earlier when I was messing around. That's quite cool, I like it. It sort of flips out, grabs a sample, and then in it goes. Wonderful. Oh, I do like that. Uh, right, I'm glad I went and checked back at that. I didn't realize that had an animation. So the next one we have is the Quetzal Extended Service Module, which, there we go, quite a lovely thing here. You can see we have a lot of stuff to toggle, including an active radiator on it, so it'll use some electric power to, uh, you know, help cool down your ship. And it will require 1.5 electric charge per minute, but it will help... Uh, take away quite a bit of the heat. It does also have a built-in reaction wheel, 300 electric charge, and it can hold up to 36 monoropellant, but as you can see here, its default is zero. So if you want to add that in, you can at your heart's content. Now the next part we have is the gamma ray spectrometer, another DM magic, or just, oh, sorry there, D magic orbital science part. And again, a lovely deploy. <laughs> oh, I forgot that that one goes out really far, but very, very cool, spins out like that. Just an awesome experiment, a very cool part overall, and of course, well, you know, science. Delicious, delicious science. Now the next one we have is an infrared spectrometer, which we can pop there. No deploy animation on this one, but it is a resource scanner, and this is a just regular default science experiment, which is always good, and it will scan the surface for ores. Now the next thing we have is the ultraviolet spectrometer, which again is a regular experiment, no DM magic needed, but it does deploy quite violently there, but quite nicely. I do do quite like it, and it's just a very cool looking camera thing. Very nice. All right, let's pop that off. The next is the magna, magna, magnometer. <laughs> uh, magnetometer. I, I work with these at work, and for some reason I couldn't p figure out how to pronounce it in my head. I literally was working with a magnetometer recently. All right, there we go. There's the magnetometer. Boom, it does deploy. There it is, lovely. Another just far extending mod, very, very cool indeed, and does require D magic orbital science. Now the next one we have is the Barquetta, if I'm pronouncing that even slightest. Now this is another unmanned command pod, so let's pop that up top. A much more rectangular boxy thing, but has quite a bit more to it. We have the, of course, unmanned command pod, RCS, a lovely reaction wheel, SAS, electric charge, and 20 monopropellant. Very cool overall design. And just a, a lovely, lovely little command pod. There we go. Next part we have is a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which is quite cool. We're going to actually turn this way because this thermoelectric generator does deploy. There we go. Uh, you know me, I'm a sucker for animations, and I just, I just like that piston motion on this thing. Very cool, and will produce uh, 12 electric charge per minute, but of course will produce quite a bit of heat as well. Always fun. Now the next part we have is yet another thermoelectric generator, which fits onto the side. Does have a little deploy animation, so it extends it outward. It can have a shroud enabled or disabled for when it is, uh, you know, with another part. But overall, I just like the I like the retracting. I love all the parts in this mod that retract outwards. Very cool. And this one has a science experiment, which will log temperatures, but it does also produce 23.4 electric charge per minute, and of course, produce some heat. And then the final radio uh, radio isotope thermoelectric generator that we have for this is right there. No deploy animation. It is just a solid RTG and will produce 49.2 electric charge per minute and of course produce some heat and then we move into an orbital telescope which of course is a science experiment and well is 
a telescope. There we go. Lovely telescope. Quite a cool looking thing. Uh, the next one we have in line is a radio plasma wave sensor. Very cool. It does deploy, as you can see there. Oh god, all of them deploy so far. There we are. Just a nice, very cool thing. We can retract that back in. And that does require the magic. All right, on to the next, we have a reaction wheel. Quite a lovely little thing. There we are, a little reaction wheel. And then we have a smaller version of it right here. So depending on the size of your probe, and well, it just helps with the torque. The larger one having 0.3 torque and the smaller one actually having 0.45. Hmm, interesting. You'd think those would be the other way around. I just realized that. We then have another interesting one, which has quite a bit more torque at 1.7. And it has three nice little reaction wheels in it. Very, very cool indeed. I do like those. I prefer the this little trifecta one. It's quite cool looking. But these are nice and sleek, so will fit into any design, which is always quite handy. We then have a thermometer experiment, which is a standard science experiment. A beautiful little piece. We then have a barometer, which is just another little science experiment. An accelerometer right there. A gravity wave detector right there. All very very wonderfully and beautifully made, always cool. And then we have the Torika Science Boom, which is gonna be another thing that we're gonna have to kind of move to the side and deploy. There we go, lovely experiments on that one. Multiple experiments, in fact, a telescope imager, an ultraviolet image, and an infrared image, all cool. And then the final part we have is the Solar Wind Analyzer, another fun science experiment. No deploy or anything, but it will detect the solar winds. All quite fun, and dear lord, we've gone through a lot of parts here, so let's not save that monstrosity and actually go to a quick satellite that I put into orbit earlier, of course using HyperEdit, to show you or give you an idea of something you could create with this mod. Now, of course, you guys probably have much, much more interesting ideas of what you could possibly make, but this is what I came up with in just a couple of minutes. A somewhat of a monstrosity of a part, but we have some cool RTGs for when we don't have the sun nearby, but also have some solar panels on it as well if we sort of turn towards the sun. Lovely, very cool. We have those little uh, trifecta SAS, or not SAS, but uh, reaction wheels, there's the word. Very nice right there. We have the lovely science booms. If I actually turn this on real quick, we can uh, toggle the magnetometer and actually extend those out. Always fun to have. There we go. So we've got all sorts of booms coming off of this thing. I've got a load of the little batteries in here in the solar panels and uh, different other experiments like the thermometer right here. And just, it's a fun little satellite. It certainly isn't the most impressive thing I've ever built, but it's it's useful and it works. And overall, it's just cool with all the different parts that we do have in this mod. So if you would like to take a look at this uh, mod for yourself and hopefully build, well, most likely build a much more interesting satellite than I ever could, then you can take a look at the link in the description as always. Now, I didn't mention it before, but this is still a beta release of this mod, so there's surely more to come and more to change in the future. But for right now, it's already a very, very impressive mod. So go have a look at it, check it out, enjoy yourself, and of course, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.